I joined the Peace Corps after graduating. I went to East LA, JC, and then went to Cal State LA. Went through four majors, was not very interested in anything. And I decided to join the Peace Corps. And the reason I wanted to join the Peace Corps was to go to Mexico. <laughs> and I wanted to go to Mexico because my parents took me when I was 13. And I remember that trip even though my parents probably thought Gil is bored as hell, you know. <laughs> he really doesn't want to be here, but I, I was just looking at everything. And you, you were talking about the peasants, and, mm -hmm. and the peasant villages really just, you know, it struck me. The way they shaped their, their plots of land with mm -hmm. uh, fences of stone and stuff. And so we passed and we went to visit all our cousins and aunts and uncles and various friends of theirs and so on. And that was very influential and so I wanted to go back to Mexico. Well, they didn't have a Peace Corps in Mexico. <laughs> I went to Venezuela. It proved to be one of the more important educational experiences of my life. Took a trip two months around Mexico and came back. Got into a master's program in Latin American studies. And while I was doing that, all of a sudden I became very interested in the material. Suddenly I became interested in um, school, which was not the case before, <laughs> for four years. And um, I was invited to go to, um, to give a summer program for the very first affirmative action students at UC Santa Barbara. And I said, okay, I'll do that. I was interviewed and I said, sure, I'll do that. And the other person who was going to take that class for the Latino students who were coming in uh, said, let's, t let's teach a class in Chicano history. Well, I didn't know Chicano history. I knew Latin American studies. Mm -hmm. but, and he said, yeah, why don't we read Kerry McWilliams' North from Mexico? But I didn't have a copy. So they made me a copy. And I remember, you know, I was preparing the day before for the, for the uh, class, and I started reading the book. And I was just jumping out of my seat because I recall, this is what my parents told me at home, I would say to myself. This is exactly what they were telling me. I heard these stories before, because he talked about El Paso, the American Smelting and Refining Corporation. That's where my parents met. That's where my mother used to work there, and my dad as well. So um, suddenly, I, I started to see this more closely than what I was really interested in doing was really to look at my own history. That's why I got into Latin American studies. And so uh, that's when I began to focus on Chicano history because these are the stories I heard at home. My parents talking, aunts and uncles talking. And I recall some of those, in fact, I've, I quote my mother and my father in several <laughs> of my studies. Um, that is, I, I just remember them talking about things. So it was really, in many ways, my parents um, and my experience growing up, you know. But you said that the trip to Venezuela or the Peace Corps had been really important. Yeah. You know, wh why was the, the Peace Corps in Venezuela so important? Well, I remember the other Peace Corps volunteers would say, yo, what are you doing? You're always going off with those guys over there. <laughs> well. Because I could speak with them, and th a lot of what they had to say or act was very similar to what I learned at home. And so I ended up feeling more at home there than many of the Peace Corps volunteers. And, you know, they would stick together and stuff. So I, f I, f I found it, what, more comfortable? <laughs> that part of it. The other one was that I learned how to speak Spanish much better than I had before. <laughs> and that was good for me. I really enjoyed that. Um, and then having traveled through Latin America. And I remember when coming back to Mexico to visit again my family there. <laughs> Ending up at one of the pyramids thinking, thinking to myself, I had done the full course. I had gone, done the circle, and come back to where I really am from. 
and I think it was that learning experience about, I think this is what Chicano historians were doing and, and people in Chicano studies as a whole were involved in is studying who they are, who we are, um, and from their own experiences. So people who grew up in the Central Valley were studying the Central Valley. <laughs> I grew up in a white working class community, although across the street from me were the Verdugos, and then we were the Gonzales. Um, they were, they were, I think some of them must have been, well I do know, I do know that there was some, somebody up the street who was a socialist. She used, she used to hide socialist literature in her house. <laughs> I used to run errands for her. But Mr. Harris across the street didn't care how many kids came to their house to watch TV when he got the first TV. <laughs> so we used to go over there to watch <laughs> Time for Beanie or somebody. <laughs> and uh, there were people like that in the neighborhood who used to come over, sit in the, on the front porch with my dad and start chatting. Uh, and it was all kinds of guys, a retired plumber over here and <laughs> people like that. So it was an interesting community, and um, I think that had a lot to do with wanting to study labor as well. 